I am Roman Kalnitsky, and today we will be talking about how Jennifer could be used to improve your life as a crystal developer. So at first, let me say a few words about myself. I am senior software engineer. Uh, most of the time I'm writing in Ruby and JavaScript, but at the same time, I like Crystal a lot and have multiple open source projects in it. And yeah, I'm dungeon master. And if you think that it relates to my talk or is important for it somehow, uh, no, just be informed. Well, uh, the first part of the talk title uh, was my rephrasal from the Serdar Doriol talk at Ruby C here in Kyiv in 2017. I know Serdar that you are here. Hello. Uh, he said that uh, you don't need active record at all and you can just use SQL for everything and you should use it. Uh, basically, I completely agree with him. SQL is a super flexible tool that can help you to achieve almost anything you need. But uh, the issue is that, you know, the life is short to do everything by your own. SQL allows you to write anything. And at the same time, you will have to write everything because from the crystal language perspective, you will be dealing with strings rather than some abstract SQL building blocks. Um, also, it should be said that at that period of time, we had quite few options uh, to choose from in the term of ORMs. And at the beginning of the year, I just started to work on my Jennifer. Uh, I saw that it would, it would be cool to write something useful for others and at the same time improve own program design skills. Also, also Crystal looks similar to Ruby, but requires a bit different approaches. And yeah, doing this, I was hiding from my master's diploma project that I was working on. So let's get acquainted with my Jennifer, my ORM. Uh, this is a simple model example. So basically, uh, data mapping lays in the heart of any ORM. Without, without it, it's impossible to do anything with data. Uh, mapping macro uh, that you can see accepts name tuple with keys that represents database column names and model fields at the same time. Uh, values represents data type and extra mapping options if needed. So uh, type declaration can be either one of crystal types that can be mapped to the database. Uh, by the way, Jennifer supports almost every, every data type that's supports by Postgre, MySQL, SQLite. Also, uh, name tuple can be uh, passed as a uh, type declaration. Uh, name tuple uh, includes uh, different configuration options. Uh, there are some number of them. Uh, besides type, you can specify default value for the column converter, uh, column real name in the database, uh, whether setter getter should be defined and some others. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that if you would like to define nilable column, uh, you can use just common crystal way, just adding question mark at the end of the type. So uh, one of the most interesting option and recent one is converter. So it allows you to transform data from the database representation to something else, like crystal enums can be created from the strings in data that is sitting in database, or classes that can be deserialized from a JSON. This means that besides default types, you can also specify almost any type you wish, uh, pass an appropriate converter. To define an uh, to defy to define an own converter, you just need to define a module or class 
with static methods uh, to DB and from DB and from hash. Um, one more interesting type is virtual. It, it allows uh, to mark field as virtual. Uh, they aren't saved to database or expected to be retrieved, but uh, it can be validated. And also it participates in lifecycle callbacks, model lifecycle callbacks. This allows you to bring some pretty interesting logic. Like for this example presents how can passwords be validated and used in the terms of uh, virtual attributes, virtual fields. And the uh, last option is mapping type. Mapping type is a uh, Jennifer specific thing. So basically it may look like uh, common type, but actually it's a uh, name tuple constant with baked in options. They are resolved at the compilation time and should be used to simplify some common uh, combination of options. Jennifer provides two mapping types, uh, primary 32 and primary 64 for primary fields. Uh, you can define your own mapping type mapping type if you want uh, just add it to the types constant inside of a macro in your model or parent model once we defined our mapping we can manipulate data instantiate model modify fields save reload do anything you expect from active record but be careful with nailable fields uh, because they can be nil uh, so to automatically apply not nil assertion, use bank method getter. Uh, attribute interface provides flexibility for reading and writing attributes. So you can access attribute by its name using attribute method, passing the name as an argument and set the value using set attribute method. If you have STI, it's not an issue for Jennifer as she supports it. Just, defy, just define all common fields in parent class and inherit your children from it. It's important that uh, mapping uh, of the parent class should have type field. This is uh, a result field and uh, currently can be customized. You can you can define mapping inside of a module if you want. Uh, to do this, just include Jennifer macros and Jennifer model mapping modules. And here it is, you can use mapping module, mapping macro inside of the module. Later on, you can include that module in any number of other modules and use mapping in them as well. And at the end, include them in any model you would like and specify any extra fields that are left. A few words about validations. Jennifer supports quite a few validations right after the right of right out of the box uh, and also allows to use uh, just simple methods and custom validation classes alongside with the baked in macros. Uh, this is a simple example with length validation. Validations are executed before update and save operations. So if it fail, operation will be canceled. You can access error information using errors field, uh, errors method. For instance, you can get full error messages generated using by translations, by the way, by full messages method. And in translations, I mean internationalization. Uh, associations. Uh, besides mapping, you can define quite sophisticated associations between your models, like uh, one to many, many to many, one to one, 
also polymorphic associations uh, supported as well. Uh, this is an example of how association can be defined and used. Uh, one important notice, uh, you should have your foreign key in the mapping. In this example, you can access relation query using heroes query method. Uh, it's important that the heroes method just returns array of heroes, not uh, query object. You can add record to the association and remove it from there. All this stuff is cool and helpful, but without the ability to extensively interact with database in terms of requests, it becomes almost useless. That's why I spent a lot of time bringing into life flexible query DSL. Let's have a look at a little example. Uh, I like this one. Uh, because it includes examples of most concepts that you can find in uh, query DSL. Jennifer allows you to query any table you would like to, not only defined uh, models. You can specify what you would like to retrieve from the database, filtering conditions for where, having clauses, group, define cities, common table expressions, and uh, a lot of other features. At first, uh, let's take a quick look at the where section. As you can see, it expects block uh, to be given. And inside of it, we can see methods that were not defined before, like C. Uh, every query builder method that expects uh, to get a scale like expression, uh, execute the block in the context of Jenny, Jennifer query expression builder. So uh, here is the implementation of uh, where method. This means that you can use expression, any expression builder method uh, inside of the block. Basically, the most used expression, the most used expression builder method is C method, which is uh, shortened from criterion. Uh, it represents reference to the current table field. Uh, it, it also accepts uh, table name as a second argument. You can use any operator you would like. And also the list of operators includes JSON related. You can combine all, uh, all, criterias, all criteria and uh, all like, expressions into logical expressions and groups. Uh, for this purpose, uh, you should you use you should use binary and and or operators uh, because of the precedence of crystal operator. Uh, you should either wrap expressions into brackets or use method calls with dots. So basically, any operator is a method, so you can use it with dot notation. To group multiple expressions, you can use uh, G method, which is shortened from uh, group. And in resulted SQL, it will be, it will look like the expression inside of the uh, parentheses. And now let's come closer to one tiny piece of magic, uh, underscore criteria any missing method executed inside of the expression builder context that starts with underscore is treated as a reference to related table column. So underscore, underscore title under the hood works as following. It's just a call for C method with title as a argument. Also, if you would like to specify exact table name alongside with column, you can just write it first and the column uh, next to it uh, separated by uh, double underscores. Expression Builder also supports some of uh, SQL functions out of the box, um, like following ones. Uh, also, you can specify your own if you would like. All mentioned features uh, reduce necessity to write raw crystal 
a raw, sorry, a raw SQL. But uh, this is still possible. You can use SQL function for such purpose. It accepts SQL as a string. Uh, and now let's get back to our previous example to remember what we had there. So group. Besides accepting block, like where method does, it accepts string or symbol as an argument. And in this particular case, uh, there are difference between them. So given symbol means column name of the current table. Uh, if you pass string value instead, it will be treated as uh, exact SQL that should be used in the query. Few words about select section. Uh, by default, all fields of target table are selected, but you can override this behavior. Uh, select method has multiple implement implementations. Uh, the shown one expects an array of criteria. Uh, you see how easily you can combine aggregation function underscore underscore criterion and alias to get exactly what you need using query DSL. Uh, let's see how query DSL combines with models. Using all method, you receive model query builder instance dedicated to the particular model. The first line is equivalent to the second one, but on steroids. Model query uh, has extra functionality. Also, uh, you can access underscore criterion directly on the model class, which is sometimes very useful and readable. Uh, for instance, any association you defined for the model just can be automatically joined, passing its name to the relation method, and join clause will be automatically generated. Uh, you can automatically load multiple associations in one or multiple requests using includes method. You can specify which relations uh, should be added to the request and read all together uh, with target model records. This allows you to load all required data in one request. Also, uh, you can automatically load each association collection in dedicated requests using preload method. Uh, they are pretty flexible and accept any level of nesting. Uh, also, you can define scopes, commonly used queries that can be referenced as a method uh, in the association objects or models. You can use any method from the query DSL in it, so uh, where, order, group anything. Also, it can accept arguments or can live without any arguments. The last important step I'd like to describe is available options for model serialization. Out of the box, Jennifer proposed only two methods for, for this purpose. Uh, they are 2H and 2STRH. First one, generates hash with symbols as a keys presenting fields. And second one uh, does the same except using strings instead of symbols for keys. They aren't flexible at all, as doesn't allow to specify what exactly should be serialized. Uh, this might be changed in future. As an alternative solution, default crystal JSON serializable module can be used but I wouldn't recommend to include it directly into a model as um, model itself has a lot of internal variables and util, utils that uh, you, would like, you wouldn't like to see in the generated JSON or YAML or whatever you would like to serialize to. That's why uh, you can use shard named Jennifer Twin. It allows you to dump all properties you would like to serialize into a class without any extra variable in it. So just clean class with only fields required for serialization. You can simply call map fields macro to map everything 
as as is from the given model or customize it it works in both sides like you can create twin object from model and backward personally i'd recommend to use the second option serializer shard so it allows you to define exact fields you want to serialize at optional serialization specify associations pass metadata and options uh, also serialization interface is quite flexible uh, in runtime you can modify what should be included or excluded from the resulted json uh, the only issue is that uh, currently e only one format is supported so yeah well uh, quite a lot for one talk apologize for this uh, for the speed of speaking if you're interested in some specific topics you can find a lot of useful information in the Jennifer documentation like uh, migration DSL that I have to skip today. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, they said that uh, writing test for code takes almost the same time that uh, writing code itself. But I'd say that writing good documentation and maintaining it uh, could take even more time. That's why if you find something inconsistent or, in, or uh, incorrect or not obvious after reading docs feel free to create uh, any issue to, to improve this uh, let's uh, mention a few numbers before before the end currently jennifer has around uh, 16 hundreds of test cases uh, executes almost 3000 sql requests in, in, in the scope of uh, test run and it takes just eight seconds amazing isn't it i'm very excited of this uh yeah at last uh i'd like to show some future plans the last year of my life was a bit uh, complicated too much real life happened uh yeah but i'm coming back to active support of uh, shard and would like to implement everything i initially planned Firstly, I'm uh, I'm going to write. I'm going to rewrite uh, qu uh, query builder a bit uh, to make it closer to the real SQL. Uh, basically, it will be not uh, visible for the developers itself themselves, but uh, will reduce complexity of maintaining that part of Jennifer. Other important. Uh, improvement i'm currently is yeah sorry uh the other important improvement that uh currently working on is the native type coercion uh so you can set string values uh that are read from your url parameters directly to your whatever whatever type field without any manual conversion work I'm not sure what will be the exact solution for this, what will be the um, DSL, but uh, yeah, currently, currently you can use uh, for this purpose only form object shard, but in many of cases uh, it looks like overkill, so that's why I'd like to simplify this step. Uh, partially because of this, uh, one of the my future goals will be to write uh, kind of small framework for managing uh, sites, aka, aka active admin from the Ruby world. So doing this, uh, I will see the some missing functionality. Uh, basic, currently, I'm not sure what will be the final stack uh, approximately I think that I will use uh, React and React admin for the front end part alongside with Webpack. <laughs> and also, definitely, it will support uh, most of the current active uh, framework frameworks. 
maybe accept Lucky because it's a bit hard to integrate Jennifer into Lucky currently, but I'm working on, on this step as well. Uh, yeah, and some some other tiny and not so tiny improvements like removing necessity to define primary field on model and views. Yeah, uh, that's basically all. So that's time for questions.